Hi, this is Josh Whiteman from Garage Gurus, and today we're gonna to be talking about module cloning. In front of me, I have the OBD Star DC706. There are tons and tons of other options out there for cloning. This is one of my particular favorites because it makes it super easy. It's all contained in a scan tool. You don't need a laptop. Uh, you don't need a breakout box, nothing like that. So module cloning is more important than it's ever been for a number of reasons. Most common is our GM Global A platform. We're now on to GM Global B. However, starting around 2014, GM moved over to that Global A platform. When they did, we were unable to continue to use a used module like we could in the past. So I have a engine computer here. It is an E82 GM module, uh, pretty commonly used on all the GM 3.6 liters. Okay. This particular one I bought off eBay for this demonstration, it was $29. So you can start to understand the benefit to being able to clone these modules here. Think about how much a normal ECU replacement job in the shop would cost. You know, if this module is only $29 because the auto dismantlers believe it's a one-time use module, that really leaves a lot of room for us to uh, make a little bit of money and have some profit on our end. So we're gonna go through the process of how to use this tool. Okay. It's a little bit differently uh, than we would normally do with the scan tool. We're not really gonna be looking at your make and model. We're more so gonna be looking all of these uh, modules up by the module number. So it's, it's a little bit different mindset. Ultimately, it's not that hard. You can see on the back here, it's labeled E82 you know, pretty clearly. I have some of the different leads out here, a, a couple of the different adapters. Hey, this particular one is for uh, on the bench um, and, and for boot mode. I'm not gonna be using that one today. You can see this is the adapter, the P004. This is the one we're gonna be using. There are a number of red toggle switches that's really kind of affecting the uh, resistance value and you have an ignition switch here too, so to speak. So I'm gonna move over to the tool now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the ECU flasher. This is an ECM for an automobile. We're gonna hit enter. At this point, I could look up the module by the search function. I can go by brand. I can go by type. Okay. In this, in this moment, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can search E82. Sure enough. It's our Chevrolet AC Delco E82. Okay. And this is the benefit to this tool. Realistically, you could buy an EEPROM tool off of Amazon for you know, 50 bucks and get a lot of this work done. However, you're gonna have to start to take the module apart. You're gonna have to look at diagrams to see where to pin on the chip and that kind of thing. It's a, you know, obviously a quite a bit longer learning curve for that. This one here makes it super easy. You can get and hit the guide function for this module. It tells you exactly what to do. It gives you the instructions. It's going to tell you how we're going to connect this particular vehicle. Uh, you can see here, it's telling us we are going to use that P004 adapter, like I said, and it's telling us to have um, the number one um, toggle switch up and the number two toggle switch down. Again, that's affecting our resistance value. It's going to give us an exact diagram, both via connector view and an actual picture of the connector. Okay? And it'll tell you what you need to do if you need to put it into boot mode. So we can go back and we can go to pinout. And we're gonna be doing it in uh, bench mode. It gives us the actual module and then it'll pull up the connector view like we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my module. Okay. Our lead here is all labeled, so it's labeled can high with a three on it and a you know can high with a six and K line and ground. So you're pretty much just matching the picture to the module. The first one we're gonna grab is our 12 volt 16. So we have our 12 volt 16 and we're gonna be pinning in on two wires in the blue connector here. So just be careful not to bend any of these pins. And the last thing we want to do is create more problems for ourselves. Okay. 
And those are both going to go to the 12 volt number 16. And now we're going to get our ground. That's going to be our larger pin on our black connector. And we're going to be connecting that to ground four and five. Obviously it references the DLC connector. Now we're going to get our can low. It's going to be the fifth pin over. Found our can low pin 14 wire. Now we're going to get can high, which is going to be directly beneath it. We're going to connect that to our brown can high pin six lead. At that point, we have all of our leads connected to the actual module. So from there, we're going to be able to connect this lead to our adapter. We're going to connect our tool to the adapter as well. So at that point, we're all set up, we're all connected. Okay? We have the scan tool plugged in just to make sure there's no problems. We could hit back. We can now hit start. Again, we're gonna be doing it in bench mode, not boot mode where we're taking the module apart. We want us to make sure we're connected to the internet, which we are. And the first thing we can do is go ahead and connect. So we hit connect and it's now communicating when you really think about network communication, this is all that's required. Power, ground, can high, and can low. We have the, the, you know, our terminating resistors, so to speak, in that adapter setup. You will have to turn on the ignition switch, so to speak. We're gonna hit connect. It's communicating with the module. So now we have made an established communication with the module. The first thing we're gonna do is gonna read our EEPROM. Okay, at this point, we're going to save it as something that's easy to remember. So I'm going to save it as AC Delco E82 Guru. And I'm going to hit OK. So that's what it's saved as. We'll keep that in mind. Now we're going to read the flash, which is basically our calibration file. Keep in mind, you know, there's a number of reasons why we'd want to do this as opposed to programming through an OE software. You know, like we said, some of these modules are a one-time use, so you can't use the OE software. Sometimes it's just quicker. You know, think about a Ford BCM. When you're done programming the BCM, then you have to reset the, the parameter reset. It takes 10 minutes, you know, just waiting there for it to gain access. Then you have to program two keys. Right? So what if instead of doing all that, we're able to just clone this module and when we install this used module into the car, the car has no idea that the module's changed whatsoever. So if they lost a key at some point, now they don't have to worry about buying a key. Right? Same deal, how often have you been told that a certain module is no longer available? It could be back ordered with no ETA. Right? In this case, we can use the used module and get the job done. It's not a great deal telling our customer, yeah, I'm not able to fix your car. The, the module's back ordered with no ETA, so I have no idea when I'm gonna get a module. I can give you a call when it comes in. It could be anywhere from one month to five months. I have no idea, right? This is a good solution. It's a solid tool. The prices even come down a little bit. So I think we're you know, somewhere less than 1500 bucks. Like I said, think about how much you normally charge for an ECU replacement whatever, $1,000 on average, let's say, we bought this module for 29. This whole process here takes about 20 minutes and then you could sell it, let's say 600 bucks, you cut the customer a good deal so they save some money, right? You have now a real nice profit margin, three jobs is pretty much gonna pay off the tool. 
no scan tool you ever buy is going to pay itself off in three in three jobs. So for me, this is an awesome tool. It's great for productivity. It's great for the shop. Really, really easy to use. As you can see, it kind of takes uh, you know all the complexity out of it. It gives you a simple picture. You connect it. You follow the directions, and you're good to go. So we were able to read the entire file. Again, all we need to do is save it, something that we can remember nice and easy. So I'm gonna save it as AC Delco E82. I'm gonna put flash. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. It's telling us that we did save it as that information. At this point, we would go ahead and transfer our leads over from our old module that's no good to our newer used module the same exact way. And at that point, once we're connected, we would go ahead and hit write EEPROM. We're gonna load the, we're gonna find that original file that we that we did. It's gonna be the AC Delco E82 Guru. It's telling us that's the one. Go ahead and write it. It wrote successfully, you can see. And then we will have to write the flash. We're gonna load the external data again. And at this point, we're going to hit Flash Guru, hit OK, hit Yes. And now it's gonna write, erase, and then write the flash as well. Okay, at this point, you can see that it has been written successfully. We're completely done now. We can go ahead and hit disconnect, quit the system, yes. So at this point, we've disconnected our tool from the module. It's no longer connected and communicating. We could back out. And from here, we can go ahead and disconnect our wires, turn our ignition switch off, and clean up our tools. So that's what the entire process looks like. Relatively pretty quick, you know, usually goes off without a problem. Now, of course, it's an aftermarket tool, so sometimes there are little bugs here and there. Generally, though, I've had real good luck with the tool. So uh, that's our module cloning from beginning to end with the OBD Star. Again, I'm Josh Whiteman from Garage Gurus. Thanks for watching.